Right, so, okay, so we're on the final part of this uh, lecture on appetite modifying proteins. Uh, we'll look at ghrelin next. Um, ghrelin's name is derived from the phrase growth releasing hormone and it's derived further from protein in the Indo European root grey. Uh, meaning to grow and relin meaning releasing substance. It's peptide containing 28 amino acid residues. And I think we've used this word before, and our exogenic is a substance that promotes hunger. Uh, our exogenic is the antonym of anorexia, a decreased appetite. Sorry, I sneezed there. Ghrelin is the only known orexigenic hormone. It's released if blood sugar levels are low. Uh, the way it binds to its receptor in the hypothalamus is conserved in primates, rodents, dogs, fish, amphibians, mammals, of course, and birds, suggesting this physiological rule evolved very early in the evolution of vertebrates. Uh, a little bit on the anatomy of the stomach. The uh, stomach has two openings, the esophageal and the duodenal, the four regions, the cardia, fundus, body, and pyrolus. Generally, the fundus collects digestive gases, so contributing a feeling of fullness. Uh, the body of the uh, stomach secretes pepsinogen and hydrochloric acid, and the pyrolus is responsible for mu mu mucus, gastrin, and pepsinogen secretion. Now, the fundus also secretes ghrelin, uh, which, as I mentioned before, increases the motivation to eat. In the body, it's mostly produced in the fundus and taken to the blood to reach appetite controlling structures in the brain, but significant amounts are also produced in the duodenum. Um, so here's some data from a study. Uh, as is often the case, most data from clinical studies, in this case of 13 obese subjects before and after diet related weight loss. Nevertheless, the influence of ghrelin is clear. After a period of fasting, blood ghrelin levels rise. Following a meal, levels fall. It is assumed that ghrelin may help the gastrointestinal tract prepare for food consumption and, given regular eating times, anticipates eating. Ghrelin levels are primarily regulated by food intake, it seems. Okay, here's another study, which, give, which is worth a read if you want to have some background in how this type of study is done. Uh, it's a randomised, double-blind, placebo-controlled study, so you should be able to define those terms. Uh, but looking at it, and it, it's, it's a standard study, the three cohorts in these with a particular intervention model, and we'll look at this in a little bit more detail soon. Okay, um, the three cohorts here, there's, so there's lean subjects with a standard BMI, morbidly obese subjects with a significantly high BMI, and post-gastrectomy subjects with a BMI that's a little bit lower than the lean subjects. Uh, so in this case, I've had some surgery that stapled the stomach or to bypass the stomach. Um, again, as is almost always the case, a relatively small number of subjects were involved, and we should always be aware of limited generalizability of these studies. Um, gastrectomy is a model, me medical procedure where all the part of the stomach is surgically removed. It's a type of bariatric surgery, which is not really pertinent to the module, model as such, but it's the sort of thing that's often studied in terms of uh, the effect of appetite regulating proteins. Right, so okay. uh, a little bit about how the study was done. Uh, the day before the study, subjects were asked to fast or drink only water from 9 o'clock in the evening on that night, uh, and to refrain from alcohol or strenuous exercise in the 24 hours preceding the study day, and that's very standard. All of the subjects were given a fixed energy breakfast, see the paper for details. Then intravenous cannulate were invent inserted in the veins in both forearms, and the subjects were allowed to relax for 30 minutes, which they'll probably need. And they were then infused with either ghrelin or saline over 270 minutes. So the ghrelin is obviously the intervention, and the saline is the placebo. Now, the people conducting the study didn't know who was getting ghrelin and who was getting saline, um, so hence double-blinded. Um, blood samples were taken at regular intervals during the study and were used to determine blood ghrelin. Uh, VAS scales were administered to assess the subject's humour, hunger, by, beg your pardon, hunger, uh, more on that in a second. Uh, the infusion stopped at 1300 and the subjects were offered an ad librium buffet lunch. That is one where they were given a free choice of what to eat. Yes, yeah, so the many visual analogue scales for assessing hunger available, and I'm sure you've seen uh, many examples of these. Okay, again, read the paper if you want more, more information on this. This is just a brief summary. Uh, what I'm going to point out is here for all groups. Uh, though the amount of ghrelin in their bloodstream did change, but not that significantly. If you look at uh, if you look at graph B, 
But for all groups, blood ghrelin reached a steady state after 60 minutes. And this is assumed to suggest that homeostatic control is being asserted. So right back to the beginning of this lecture. Okay. Um, yeah, so ghrelin's oxygenic action is of most interest to us, but is now known to have a range of wider effects. And again, there's a paper there which you can read if you are interested. Uh, ghrelin's role in glucose homeostasis is complex, uh, but clearly important. Um, some studies suggest that ghrelin inhibits insulin secretion, so reducing the rate of conversion to glucose uh, from glucose to glycogen. However, other studies have reported that there's some simulation of insulin production or no effect on the rate. So again, we get in the area of small studies and people being different, and we shouldn't extrapolate too much from the, many of these studies. Oops, rest on a bit further forward. Okay, CCK, another one of these appetite modifying proteins. Um, it acts together with leptin to regulate hunger, hunger signals, that is satiety, so the opposite effect of growing. Um, eye cells um, in the uh, duodenum and the jejunum uh, secrete uh, cholecystokinin, and interestingly, cholecystokinin literally means to move the gallbladder. So it promotes the gallbladder to, to contribute to digestive processes by producing the various secretions it produces. Uh, here's an overall summary of the process. Uh, I'm not going to go into details this year. You can read the notes in the presentation if you want. And we'll notice that <coughs> from simulating the gallbladder it produced bile through to suppressing gastric empty and it's processes that overlap and that's that's often the case in the digestive system there's things that happen at different stages and not everything gets digested at the same stage at the same rate okay cck and obesity uh, there appears to be evidence of less than average solocystic cholecystokine in, in very obese people unlike the levels in obese and slimmer people this low level of cck may contribute to reduce feelings of fullness and difficulty in losing weight in very obese people. Uh, as you, you probably gather from now, this is a complex issue. Uh, there have been many studies that don't do developed drugs. You, drugs, looks, drugs look at the action of ghrelin and leptin and CCK and many others, and so far they've been unsuccessful in terms of providing the thing which many people would want, which is a pill to prevent or reduce obesity. Yeah, there's just another thing on ghrelin's roles, which I probably should have had a little bit earlier. I think maybe in the next slide as well. Yeah, just to uh, summarise this, uh, the process is independent of the or exogenic role of ghrelin. Uh, administration of exogenous ghrelin, that is to say through injection typically, uh, increases adipogenesis, the accumulation of fat in the adipose tissue. It also decreases lipogenesis, the synthesis of fatty acids from non-lipid precursors. For example, the conversion of fatty acids into glycerol into fats or the metabolic processes through which acetylcoenzyme A, and you may remember that from human metabolism, is converted to triglycerides, that is say fats. It also decreases lipolysis, the metabolic process through which triglycerides, fats, Break down by hydrolysis into their constituent molecules, glucose, beg your pardon, glycerol, and free fatty acids. Uh, these adipogenic effects, that is to say, producing fats rather than destroying fats or using them for energy, appear to be independent from ghrelin's or exogenic function. So there's a lot more work needs to be done in this area. Okay, and that's all, folks. Thanks for listening.